Hello everyone, my name is Anuj. I'm a third year MBBS student at GMC Nagpur and in this video I'll talk you through how I managed to get rank 2 in my college while also scoring distinction in all four subjects that is in second year MBBS while also managing two successful businesses along the way one of them being this YouTube channel and second of them being my app Axon which is an app for neat UG preparation of course all while enjoying this little thing called as life. Without any further ado, let us go. So my number one tip over here is that there is no shortcut in life and I, I don't think I need to tell you this but here it is there is no shortcut in life to do anything let's say i want to move this flower pot from over here to over here there is some sort of effort that i put because if i did not put this flower pot would be the same as always so the same way in life if you want to move from point a to point b you have to push yourself forward because if you don't life is going to pull you away so that's my main objective over here is that there is no shortcut you have to study to get through an exam i had an exam i had my books that's it finish the book revise it and there you go exam will go beautiful but there are a lot of steps that are followed in the way three of them being very very important first of them is small steps every single day what it means is that there is a lot of books in that in that library as you can see and it's not possible to read an entire book in like three weeks or two weeks you have to read small small segments every single day in order for it to compound at the end and before you even know it you would be at the end of the book it's just small steps every day second is consistent revisions because you see you're taking these small steps every day but on your on your day 31st you'll probably forget what you read on the first day it might also happen in the day eight that you forget what you read on the first day which usually happens with me but anyways consistent revisions help me you know keep all the information which i've already you know implanted in my brain fresh so that it does not decay and go away my third point is that i used to read the important topics first so the systems which are very very important in pathology you can take the example that the cvs is important rs is important but whereas if you consider that the skin system it is not really important in second year but it also comes back as dermatology in the final year so whatever you're skipping right now as important as non-important topics will come back to you again to sum up three golden rules small steps every day consistent revisions and important topic works my second point is getting to know the examination and what is it asking you about so if you are appearing for a theory based examination like i did in second year mbbs the study for that will be different than an mcq based examination which you might appear later in your journey called as national exit test so these are two different patterns of examination in theory examinations the thing is that you can skip a lot of things you can only read the previous 10 years paper and you will be good to go but for the mcq examination you have to read every single detail and of course the last previous year papers does help a lot right so my timeline in second year kind of looked like this in the first 10 months i prepared my focus for the mcq examinations because what i've noticed in my need preparation as well was that if i'm done with the mcq you know part and i'm done with most of the subject uh, from the mcq point of view reading theory becomes a lot lot easier so if you're in second year and if you have got two options if you want to prepare for next or prepare for your university examinations i would say prepare for next because along the way what will happen is that some topics will overlap with your theory examination and what you can do is simply revise more extra for theory but while main focus being towards your mcq examination because that will be more important in your career so the first 10 months for the mcq examination the next six months i spent doing the theory part mostly plus some mcqs and the last two months i shifted exclusively towards the theory examination the preparation for mcq is very different from theory like I already talked about. So my third point is getting through your first pass of the subjects. So in second year MBBS we had four subjects and the first pass basically translated to me reading at least once these four subjects all together. So what are the objectives of the first pass? First one is that you have to map out the subject. You should know what is going on in the subject, what are the different topics etc. Second one is to getting to know what are the important topics of the subject. It is important to note that no matter what you do it is going to happen that by the end of your first pass you will only retain a about 60 to 70 percent of what you've read the remaining 30 to 40 percent will go away like that because that's how the brain works we're in the forgetting curve we forget the things that we are reading so that's it this is the main object the algorithm that you should use is if you don't have any video lectures then go with the books and then do your review books and that should suffice and if you have certain apps then you can you know watch the video lectures then go with the notes and then go with the textbook so that your life becomes a lot easier and your first pass becomes way smoother and while revising make your own notes and revise those notes because revising an entire book can be difficult at times why is making notes important because see this is the robin's book which is the book of pathology which i studied last year and it is very very heavy and i can't even lift it up so this is the book which i studied completely from start to end i cannot possibly revise this entire book 
you know before my examination so what i have to do is that i have to make notes out of it so that this entire bulky books becomes something sort of this much and this much is very feasible very practical for me to revise and you know it also filters out all the not important content in this book so there are two techniques which i use the first one is the notes for theory and second is for the mcqs so for the notes of the theory i use this technique called as the ipad collection technique i came up with the name uh, so what it basically means is that if you have an ipad you know you can take the different photographs from different books or you can you know screenshot them if you have a pdf bring all of them into one grand pdf and you know read from that pdf so you never have to write a single line but you always have a set of notes with you so here's an example from one of my friend which is abhijit he actually ranked in the top 5 in our batch so this is his notes and he shared this with me and this is how he has collected everything very beautifully and of course if you are doing it for the mcqs the mcq notes should basically be your mistake book or while watching videos from different apps or services so now that you've done all of that and made your beautiful notes now what now you're going to revise that and by that i come to my fifth point that is sharpening your memory and increasing your retention so i'll be sharing a few techniques with you which will make your revision time very very less So one of them is the Pomodoro method. So what you should do is that next time when you are revising something, set up a big timer and you know look at that big timer. Give yourself only thirty minutes. Like in these thirty minutes, I have to complete this topic A B C D. And if I don't complete it, something bad will happen. So what will happen is that your mind will get rid of all the distractions and you will be completely focused. Second technique is called as the Feynman technique. So imagine that you are sitting with your little cousin. You are reading something like Mycobacterium tuberculosis from Microbiology, and he comes up to you and asks you, "Ye kya likha hai? What is this? T H two immunity?" TH1 immunity and then you proceed to you know tell him about what this immunity is so what will happen is that you will be explaining it to him and you will find some flaws in your own concepts and then what you can do is that you can go back to the book refer again and teach him again so this is the ideology for the feynman technique is that basically you teach people whatever you have learned uh, and if you don't have anything you can teach it to yourself by closing the book and you know trying to tell yourself whatever you have just learned just try this out with your juniors and just see how happy they become if you teach some topics to them the third one is is called as the active recall sheet this is something which you know everyone should practice but it is so difficult to make that most of us do not so in google docs what you can do is that from every single line of your kitab you can go ahead and make a question and put it into google docs so the next time if you want to revise something go through that questions and try the feynman technique on yourself next important topic is flash cards and anki is the app which you should use for flash cards if you are using lectures or like sketchy etc pathom etc what you can do is that there are flash cards available in the anki deck and you can just Just use that deck, which is freely available on Reddit, and you can use that deck to sharpen your memory. Do Anki every single day, and you can see in the first week only, you will start to realize how powerful of a tool that is. In third year MBBS, I'm very alsi, and I haven't made a single flashcard till now. But I hope that I will make some flashcards from Maro Notes or something like that. And the last point is frequent revisions. The more frequently you do all of these techniques, the more retention you will get. Lastly, talking about retention, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, that is Lecturio. What we all missed out on the pandemic. it was clinical postings and there was no way to learn the clinical skills which were lost but what if i told you there was an application a website which could help you learn every single clinical skill that you lost and all the clinical cases that you might have missed it is lecturio one of my favorite features of lecturio is this one that it has got a physical examination and clinical examination guide and it teaches you basically every single aspect what makes it special is that they have actually used real patients to demonstrate the exact things that you're going to be testing for apart from that there's also a huge queue bank which has a lot of of clinical cases so one of the features that i really love about it is the extremely massive video library that it has got so it covers all the different subjects right all the way from anatomy to pathology to biostatistics and epidemiology and these videos are taught by international faculties who are in the top of their fields and you know what's the best part about lecturio it is available on every single device that you have so right from your tablet to pc to your mobile phone all the features that i just talked about are also present in the app i request you to sign up for lecturio absolutely for free and if you want to buy the premium and subscription which will give you access to all the beautiful features which i just talked about you can do so by using my code anuj patel 40 or using the link in the description which will give you 40% off on their premium subscriptions no matter which one you buy what i would recommend is going with the one year plan which will cost you not even 720 rupees per month which is very very cheap compared to the value that you're getting out of it the code is anuj patel 40 and if you're interested lecturio could help you in your medical journey and i'm sure of it and again thanks lecturio for sponsoring this video right the next point is sixth one that is discussions So if I had to attribute one thing 
about why I cleared my exams in the first place and topped them in the first place, it would be this. It would be discussions. And the reason I was able to pull this off was because I have great friends okay, whom I can be very, very open with about what I'm studying and how is my preparation going on, etc. So how do you find such friends? This was one of the questions which I got in my comment section last video. So the basic thing is that it just happens, right? You meet a person, they become your friends, you start trusting them and slowly and slowly, gradually, you, you know, talk about academics and if you be open with them, I'm sure they will be too. Try it twice, try it thrice, it does not matter because even if you tell your strategies to someone, it, it won't matter because they have their own plan, they have their own schedule. If they don't share it, at least it won't hurt you because they have got their own plan and they will go in that way. Try small and you know gradually increase it if you get the same amount of response from the people that you're trusting and calling your friend. So while discussing with friends, there are two things which you can do. One of them is make someone an accountability buddy, which I talked about in the last video, which basically goes something like this. I tell my accountability buddy that no matter what, I have to watch five videos every single day she tells me that she wants to watch five videos and two question marks every single day and it is my duty to keep her doing that every single day and it is her duty to keep me you know pushing forward every single day so this is the concept of an accountability buddy and without it it is difficult to stay consistent right. the second thing is the mcq discussion group so me aditi and abhijit three of us discussed mcq every single day uh, during our examination season. So what that did is that most of the MCQs which we encountered in our exams came from our discussions itself. We used to open up, you know, this book called as Unique, which has a collection of MCQs. And we used to just, you know, talk about what this what is the answer of which MCQ and without that discussion it would not have been possible. And the final type of thing which you can do with your friends is something called as a case discussion group which basically means that a group of friends trying and discussing the cases which are very very common. Five or seven people and we try to discuss most of the cases in CVS and RS and GID. What you have to do is seven people in a group each people have to take up one case of their own so mine was once i remember rheumatic heart disease somebody else had something like endocarditis somebody else had uh, bronchial asthma so we used to present a case to all of us that there was a patient who was apparently all right in the same history presenting manner because we were lacking clinical postings at that time and we discussed about what the solution is what the management is what the pathology pharmacology etc is so what we did was if we didn't have postings, we created some sort of postings for our own itself. So case discussion group with your friends or with your juniors is an excellent way to go. You know, you just start it today and you will see the, you know, enthusiasm that you get after seven or six discussions. Right. My seventh point is I had a very strong plan of action. What does that mean? So I've done everything and I've run my first read, first revision done. I've only got 45 days remaining for my examination. What to do now? So now I used to sit down and make my entire plan for the next 45 days. I used to make it day wise. So the first five days, let's say Monday to Thursday, what am I going to do? What am I going to study? What are the topics I want to study? Every single day planning is something which I've been following for a very long time and it really decreases the amount of time you spent passing away. So my main goal over here was to strengthen my important topics to the maximum level, you know, write them down 10 or 5, 15 times. It's covering also the weak points which I have in my preparation because a preparation is never absolute instead of just focusing on the black or white zones the gray zones which are left i also focused on them this 45 days i have also followed the pomodoro method extensively because it is difficult to find motivations especially when your exams are postponing which kept happening to us at least you know three or four times during our second year mbs so pomodoro really helped me get through these postponements i hope that they won't happen again but if they do Here's the deal. Right. The eighth one is very, very important. That is the negative thoughts and the imposter syndrome. There is this imposter syndrome present in every single one of us. Even I used to feel that my preparation is not enough. I don't know what will happen. So there are a few things which I did. The first thing is that I kept telling myself that you shall prevail. This, this one single sentence which I told repeatedly, you know, helped me a lot to go through that phase where I felt like I kuch padhai nahi hui because there were times where this happened. Second of all, whenever I felt like this, I used to, you know, keep my mobile phone or keep my camera and record myself studying what that did was that sometimes you know when you go back through the footage you feel like nahi tumne actually mein kuch padha hai and you have put in the amount of hard work because it is very easy to lose track of amount of work that you have done once you are in that you know hardcore preparation mode the third thing which i did was i took the mindset and i thought about a person named johnny he's he's a hypothetical person i thought about how he wasted the entire year he enjoyed the entire lockdown did study much and uh, now Johnny is, you know, just starting his first read. And I know from my heart that Johnny is going to pass. 
and i compared johnny to myself and realized that my preparation was actually really good so imagining this hypothetical model of a person whose preparation is less than you right makes you feel better about yourself this is something which everybody should do because if you keep telling yourself that my preparation is not enough it is going to take your mental clarity very very down and that is going to affect you in every single way imagine the concept of a johnny who scores less than me but still passes the examination is something which really helped me so lastly i want to talk about in the ninth point the resources which i used and in second year mbbs this is the list of the books which i used you can find more and you can read more about it on my website on my blog and there's also a separate video which i made about that right so my next point is the art of writing the paper that is everything is done and now i am going to the paper and how i am going to write so first of all you should write everything in points second of all your handwriting should be appreciable third draw a lot of diagrams like a lot of them draw one diagram in every single page if you want to fourth make a lot of flow charts because nobody likes to read paragraphs and paragraphs fifth if you are highlighting a very very important point just make a box and write that point in that i can you know remember one thing is that uh, we were asked about what are the side effects of using steroids so there was this one beautiful line in kdt which i still remember is that short term users of very high dose of steroid is life saving but even small dose of steroid used for a long period of time can give to a lot of complications so i wrote that exact line which i remembered in my paper made a box out of it and i think that that impacted the examiner a lot more because i'm sure the examiner also read kdt at some point in his life and he remembered that beautiful line next thing is give some space between your answers and make it neat and clean right and the last thing the most important one is the time management because if you aren't managing time your paper will just go away like that so let me tell you my story in first year mbbs when my anatomy one paper was going on for some reason i thought that you know i had more time so i thought that paper was going to end at 1 but in reality the paper was going to end at 12:30 so at 12:20 i had around one and a half long answer questions left while ma'am told us 10 minutes left so in that 10 minutes i was so stressed and i wrote that all the uh, long answer questions and in the end i got highest in anatomy so imagine what would have happened if you know psychologically i was a bit mature and knew what the paper timing were so in i would have completed it by 12:30 and my marks would have been even higher it does not matter i'm just saying that time management is something which you should be very very cautious about so now my theory exams were done and we were really really happy and now there was time for you know the practical examination and how to deal with this practicals problem so first of all uh, comes the vivas and the main thing is that in vivas as you should know all the common things in life for pathology that is what are the normal blood counts right what is the causes of let's say schistocytes because those are something which is commonly seen uh, what are the parasites present in blood so the most common things in life you should know because that is something which they are going to ask you and of course if you are answering every single thing the examiner takes the viva to the next level and keeps asking you things which are kind of abnormal so make sure that after you are done with your common things you also look at some of the micro details second thing is that before your vivas talk to some person have already given that viva that might be a senior that might be a batchmate anyways that basically concludes this very long of a video and if you enjoyed watching this please consider subscribing because it literally takes hours and hours to make content like this and if you're a new person over here i definitely recommend you to visit all the other videos of the channel i'm sure you would have a very enjoyable afternoon evening morning of watching my videos which i've made anyways thanks a lot for watching and it's your boy anuj and i hope that i'll see you here next time bye